ZapRite is an easy to use onboarding mechanism for merchants to accept Bitcoin payments in a self-sovereign way, both on-chain and via the Lightning Network and a number of other mechanisms. In fact, this might be one of the simplest onboarding mechanisms that I've ever come across to date. Um, and we're going to explore all about it. We're going to take a look at how to get a set up, link up all your wallets and use it and set up as an online merchant yourself. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, big shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you have a few priorities in mind that include peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is a great place to be. You can sign up with nothing more than an email address. Once you're in, scroll down, choose a currency, payment method, and an amount, and you can start viewing offers immediately. They also have a peer-to-peer -peer lending market in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. You can check them out today. Links are down below if you you want to sign up. I also have a full tutorial on both services. Now, of course, when you do stack some SaaS, you're going to want to secure them with some of the best hardware on the market. I love CoinKite and everything they're doing. Cold Card Mark IV is currently my go-to piece of hardware. I have all their other goodies too, things like tap signers, SaaS cards, block clocks, open dimes, got it all. And I pre-ordered the ever-living hell out of the Cold Card Q, which I'm very excited for. If you want to reserve one or pick up anything else I mentioned, you can head over to CoinKite.com and you can use code BTC sessions for a nice discount at checkout. Now, backups are also very, very important. And Cedar has one of the most robust and beautifully designed steel backup systems on the market today. Uh, it has a disk and capsule design, which will protect your seed phrase from the elements like fire, water, and corrosion. They have full starter sets that allow you to get set up with one or two seed phrases. And one of the cool things about Cedar is that if you do need to swap out your seed, you don't need to swap out the entire system. You can just grab a few more disks and swap them out as you see fit. You can also add additional information onto additional disks, like what wallet you're dealing with, derivation pass, and plenty more. Check them out. I've done a video and there are links down below, depending on where you want to ship to. Now, Nunchuck has you covered with your assisted multi-sig needs. Their Honey Badger program is absolutely awesome. Basically, you use your mobile device to set up a multi-sig quorum. You will hold three keys. They will hold one. Uh, you can use devices like the tap signer cold card and plenty of other options once you're all set up you have your multi-sig quorum you have baked in inheritance planning and on top of that uh, you also don't have to use KYC. So you don't have to give them your private information to set up and have this working for you. So I've done a full tutorial, check it out, and you can check them out at nunchuck.io. And finally, shout out to Start9, your sovereign computing solution. Love these guys. They offer plug and play devices to host your entire Bitcoin stack, but also your digital life. So you can run things like Bitcoin Core, Lightning Nodes, uh, mempool.space, uh, Join Market. You can also host your files, passwords, photos, um, Noster clients and relays and even some AI stuff as well. Highly recommend you check them out. They've got everything from light options all the way up to what I'm running, which is the Start9 Server Pure, which is an absolute beast. Uh, yeah, check them out today, start9.com, and you can check out my tutorial as well. With that, enough of my rambling. Let's get into the tutorial. All right, so let's get started off with some prerequisites. What are you gonna need to know in order to successfully navigate this tutorial? And I suppose that all depends on exactly how you're gonna be using ZapRite as an online merchant, uh, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll basically say that anything that I cover here, any tool that I use, there will be a dedicated tutorial for it that will be linked down in the show notes. So if I pull up a wallet and you're unfamiliar with it, look down there, there'll be a full tutorial on it. If I start using some sort of lightning mechanism that you're unfamiliar with, go check down below. It will all be there. So if there is anything here that you're like, I, I don't know what that is, just check down below. You will find what you need, but I will also do my best to try and outline everything as explicitly as I can as we go through this. Um, I will say that you're going to want to know how to have a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, 
And you may also want to know how to have a Lightning Wallet. And that Lightning Wallet can either be um, a, a service like Albi or Strike or uh, Zebedee or whatever. Those are all kind of uh, custodial options. Or you can be running your own node on something like a Start9 server. And so I'll be detailing both of those options. The wallet that I'll be using for on-chain regular Bitcoin payments will be Sparrow Wallet. I'll link to a video on that below. I really like that one for desktop, but really any good Bitcoin wallet that allows you to export something called your XPUB, your extended public key, uh, will suffice. So you don't have to use exactly what I'm using, but nonetheless, links will all be down below to help you along your way. With that, let's take a look over at the ZapRite webpage. So all in all, ZapRite is effectively um, uh, a mechanism that allows you to set up a whole bunch of different payment options as an online merchant. And this can be done in a couple different capacities. Number one, you could just have a payment link on your website. And so when somebody goes to a certain page to pay for something, they can basically go and, and pay either on-chain Bitcoin or Lightning, but also via uh, traditional fiat payment mechanisms as well. So you kind of get this side by side that you may not get in other instances. And that may allow you to just default to a single solution instead of having a Bitcoin solution and a fiat solution if you're dealing with different types of customers. Um, so that's super useful. Also, again, as I alluded to in the beginning here, you can do the Bitcoin stuff in a very self-sovereign way so that ZapRite well, ZapRite uh, by default never holds any of your funds. They just allow you to link up different payment mechanisms that either go to some sort of a, a processor in the case of fiat stuff uh, or that go to Bitcoin wallets that hopefully are held entirely by yourself. So it allows you to have a, a, a nice page that people can go to. But as soon as somebody sends a Bitcoin payment, it ends up directly in the wallet that you intend it to. And there's no third party involved with that if you're going the absolute self-sovereign route. Uh, so what I will say is that this is um, very easy to sign up for. Basically, just log in, set up with an email address. Um, you, you're not required to have any sort of like KYC or anything like that. You just set it up and go. Uh, on top of that, this is a, a paid service, but you can get a free trial, so a free 30 days. So if this is something that you're like, uh, I, I'm not sure, give it the 30-day try and then if you don't want to pay for it, then of course, just don't top up your account. Don't, don't pay in Bitcoin. Okay. So, um, it, it gives you the, the chance to try it and then see if the interface and, and everything is worth it to you. Um, I think for myself moving forward, I mean, I'll let you be the judge. We'll dive in and then, and then I'll give my final thoughts at the end. So nonetheless, you can sign up with just an email address. Once you're in, uh, you're going to be here on your main page and uh, we're going to investigate what's in front of us and what you should do first. So I'm, uh, I, I have a blank slate here. I do have um, an actual ZapRite account that I use uh, now regularly, but um, I wanted to show just with a dummy email address um, how it would look if you just logged in fresh and didn't have anything set up. So this is what we're dealing with right now. This is, again, a free trial. And um, and so I, I pretty much have access to everything. Over on the left-hand side, we have our navigation. So we've got our home and then we've got all our merchant tools and any details about my business in particular, and then help and support. In the middle on the home screen, we have any previous orders, transactions, payment links, invoices, tasks, subscription, like in terms of our billing and all that. Uh, and then um, just market price of Bitcoin, all that stuff down at the bottom, and then any uh, how-to guides or uh, tickets that you've submitted down below for any help and support. So that, that's pretty much the stuff at the top here. What you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to go into settings over on the left. At least this is what I did first. I went to settings and this is where you get to kind of set up all your defaults. You know, how do you want things presented? What, what default settings are important to you? So you can set your local currency. Of course, I'm Canadian, but nobody uses Canadian moose shekels anymore. So I default to the US dollar as my pricing mechanism. 
and I hope to be paid in Bitcoin. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to leave that as US dollars. Now, anytime you send an invoice, which is one thing we'll go through, you can put a, uh, a customer note. So you can put something down at the bottom as an invoice footer if you want to. I'm going to leave that blank for right now. Um, and then privacy. You can enable optional privacy features for your organization. These settings affect what information will be shown on public facing URLs and PDFs. Okay, so do you want to hide the name of your organization? I'm not going to do that. Uh, do you want to hide the organization email? You can do that if you choose. Um, An address, I'm sure, uh, you know, unless you're dealing with a brick and mortar store, then you might want that uh, hidden. Maybe you'll check that off. Either way, up to you. Up next, uh, the billing tab. So when I go here, uh, it will just tell me, okay, what what are my payments? Okay, well, it's either 25 bucks a month or 240 annually. It equates to um, 20, basically 300 overall or 240 overall for a year. Um, if you do the annually, then you're you're down to 20 bucks a month. So that's that. Um, it will let you know. Uh, if you need to top anything up, uh, again, all prices are in U.S. dollars. You can pay in Bitcoin, Lightning, and USD. Um, yeah, there we go. Moving on, company section. So this is where you would put uh, legal name, email, phone, website, tax ID, if you want to include that, um, company address, all that stuff. The only thing required is just a name and an email address. And uh, just <laughs> we'll, we'll just go with John Smith for right now, just as an example. And this is just a dummy email address that I've been using here. Okay, great. For now, I'm, I'm gonna leave everything else out. Um, this is just, again, an example here. So profile. This is where you can uh, add in any sort of logo that you may have, uh, a brand color that you want to incorporate. You also get a username and a display name, okay? Now, it says you cannot change your username after it has been set. They may change this policy in the future, but assume it will remain true. It's also important to note that your username, um, if I'm not mistaken, will be utilized in the future in creating a dedicated lightning address for you. So choose wisely um, and just under the assumption that you may not be able to change it. Um, so again, so like I can see like it'll, it starts to pop up at the top here, Ben at zapright.me. Okay. Well, that, that's sweet. I like that. <laughs> I'll just leave that for now. Uh, display name. Uh, we'll just call it. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Sure. Oh, I, I'm, I think I'm not allowed to have any spaces here. So I'll just leave it as uh, maybe Benjamin. Sure. Okay, great. So I've, I've filled in some information. I'm going to leave the logo for now because we'll, we'll jump to my real page uh, in a little bit. But uh, I can now hit update. And my organization settings have been updated. Now, uh, you can see here there is a lightning address and it says lightning address coming soon. So at some point in the future, people will be able to just pay me directly in lightning to ben at zapright.me. Don't try that right now because it's, again, not, not useful at the moment. Okay, so we basically have filled out information about us, things that may be viewable um, on payment pages or invoices or whatever. Up next, we're going to want to navigate over to the connections page, and we're going to take a look at how we can connect our payment mechanisms. All right, so this is the connections page, and this is where you will provide all information to be able to accept payments in various forms. So you can see here, there's a number that are, are kind of lit up. There's a few that are grayed out that are on the way. And, uh, and from what I hear, there will be many more integrated soon. So what's available at the time of recording this video, you've got regular Bitcoin payments, LN Bits, LND, that's like running your own node, uh, Liquid, Strike, Ibex, Zebedee, Stripe, this is credit card payments, ACH, SEPA payments, Interac e-transfer in Canada. You can connect your own unchained multi-sig vault. You can also connect uh, a Lightning address via Albi as well. Um, upcoming, Cash App, Swan, Voltage, Blink, OpenNode, BTC Pay, QuickBooks, Zero, and these are like you know, for obviously QuickBooks is, is just keeping track of stuff. Um, but I mean, already, 
even with the grayed out ones, the, the amount of stuff that you can connect here is, is already pretty awesome. So, you know, I was super impressed getting on here and seeing this much. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to take a look at how to connect a few things. Um, I'm going to focus in on getting Bitcoin payments, um, connecting your own node if you'd like to do that, and then how simple it is to connect things like Strike or Zebedee or Albi for basic Lightning payments um, if you don't mind uh, a custodial option in the interim until you move out to something else. We'll also touch on Liquid, um, although that is uh, will be um, more functionality will be coming from that down the line. And then in terms of things like Stripe and ACH and SEPA and Interact, that's going to be very dependent. Basically, Stripe, you just have to have a Stripe account for accepting credit card payments. So that's something kind of outside the scope of this, but just know that you can connect it. And I'll show it connected in my other uh, screen. ACH and SEPA don't apply to me because um, I'm not in zones where those make sense. I'm in Canada. Interact e-transfer does apply to me. I'll quickly show what that looks like. Um, and then Unchained is is pretty cool. So I'll probably touch on that as well. So either way, uh, we're going to get started with the most basic of basic. We need a Bitcoin wallet that we're going to connect with Zaprite. So I have pulled up Sparrow Wallet on my desktop here. Again, it may well look different if you're using a different wallet software. This is what we're going with. Uh, it's my default go-to for desktop. So nonetheless, we're going to be creating a new wallet here. I'm going to go File, New Wallet, and we'll just call this Zapright Test. Okay, I'm going to hit Create Wallet. And again, there's, there's a bunch of scary things here if you've not used uh, Sparrow before, but we're basically just going to choose new or imported software wallet. Up at the top, we're going to choose uh, mnemonic words, and I'm just going to make a small one for 12 words just for the uh, ease of making this tutorial, and we're going to hit generate new. This gives us 12 words here. I'm going to do something you should never do, and I'm going to screenshot these so I can confirm the backup again. This is not something I advise. You typically secure this uh, physically, not digitally. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we're going to hit confirm backup. We're going to re-enter the words here and we'll jump ahead to where I've done that. Once I have those words entered in, I'm going to hit create key store and I'm going to hit import key store. Everything fills in here, a whole bunch of information. I just hit the blue apply button in the bottom right. I'm not going to add a password right now. And my wallet is now all set up, of course, with a zero balance at the moment. So we have everything we need right here. Um, but what we do need to do is we need to go down to settings, which we were already in before. Down here, there is something called the XPUB slash ZPUB. And this is the information we're going to require momentarily on Zapright. So on Zapright itself, where it says Bitcoin, I'm going to hit connect and it says, hey, what is this wallet label? We're going to call it Zapright test again. Don't need a space there. OK, and then we need the extended public key. So we're going to go and we're going to copy this information here and we're going to paste it in. There we go. And it says, what address type do you have? Okay, what, uh, what addresses do you have in your wallet? So we can double check that by hitting receive. And we can see it starts with BC1. Okay, so that is checked off. And then it says, hey, generate a receive address in your wallet and confirm the last six characters below. So we should see an address that starts with BC1QW3. BC1QW3, that looks right. So we need the last... How many digits? We need the last six characters, okay? So we'll just, I'm just gonna highlight the last, actually, I guess I can't do that, but <laughs> we can, uh, uh, either way. Uh, so what is that? W, L, N, uh, sorry, W, L, 9, M, A, E. W, L, 9, M, A, E. So we'll type that in to confirm. W, L, 9, M, A, E. And let's hit okay. All right, we're now connected. Every single Bitcoin payment that we get from now in, now on, will uh, go directly to this wallet that is governed by my Sparrow wallet. This, by the way, could be connected to a hardware wallet. We set it up as a hot wallet, but this could be connected to a cold card or something like this, or even a, a multi-sig wallet that you have in Sparrow, or whatever else 
your little heart desires. So either way, we are all set up for Bitcoin payments now. Let's investigate some of the other connection options that we have. All right, so the next thing I want to show you guys how to connect is your own Lightning node. And I'm showing this first because it's the most self-sovereign way to do this um, so that there's no middlemen. All payments go directly to your own Lightning node. So if you have a setup Lightning node already, then this section is for you. And of course, I've done a tutorial on how to do that. You can find that down below. If you do not have your own LND node set up, you can skip this section and jump to the next one where we use simpler options like Strike or Zebedee or Albi. And those are all, you know, pretty much sign up and go. And it's, it's pretty simple. But those of you that have your own Lightning node, we're going to dive in. I'm going to be using my LND node, which is sitting on my Start9 server. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to LND. I'm going to get hit connect. And we need two pieces of information. One is the endpoint URL and one is the invoice macaroon. And you may be looking at that saying, what the hell are those? Not to worry. If you click this little learn more uh, button right here, it will take you to a page that explains everything and how that works. It gives a few different options of nodes and how to connect. And they're all detailed down below. It's more or less going to be the same thing that I'm going to do. It just may vary depending on which node implementation you're running. Nonetheless, let's jump back here. So I need an endpoint URL. This is basically um, just a, where is my node? Where's the node to even connect to, okay? I'm here, this is my start nine server. And so LND is right over here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose LND. And by the way, again, your, your lightning node should be up and running and you should have already set up lightning channels otherwise you're not going to be able to send and receive payments, okay? Either way, I clicked on LND. I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to click on Config. Actually, sorry, I lied. We're not clicking on Config. We're, gonna, we're clicking on Properties. My bad. Uh, anyways, we are looking for something that says REST URL, which is the second from the bottom one right here. And there's a handy little copy button. So I'm going to hit that copy button. And that information will be pasted in here where it says Endpoint URL. Uh, so I can just paste that. And there we go. Okay, up next, we need the invoice macaroon. How do we get that? Well, it's not too bad, okay? Back in my uh, start nine, I have something called Thunderhub. We're gonna use Thunderhub as the example. I believe you can do it as well with Ride the Lightning, but this is what I'm using. This is the example that they give, and so this is probably the most convenient way to do it. If you don't have Thunderhub currently on your node, it's easy to download and install that app, and it will work perfectly with your LND node. Either way, you can click and open that up. It will open up another tab, which takes you to, and there's a bunch of stuff happening on my node right now. Either way, um, it'll take you to this. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Again, I've done a tutorial on this. You can check it out if you want, but we're just going to focus in on what we need. I'm going to scroll down on the left-hand side. There's a, a tab that says tools. We're going to go there. And then we're going to look for something called the bakery. We're going to bake a macaroon. Exciting. We're going to hit bake. And uh, it, on that page from ZapRite that explains everything will tell you which ones you need, but we need the ability to uh, create invoices, which is this one. As soon as you click yes, it will light up lighter than the other grayed out options. And then we also need the ability to get invoices. I think that's this one. Yep, there we go. Create and get invoices. That is it. No additional information is required. Don't click yes on anything else. Only those two. Okay, scroll down, hit bake macaroon. Boom. Okay, we need the second one, the one that says hex. We're going to hit copy. That's the information we need over here to paste in this section. And then we hit okay. That's it. We're now set up to receive lightning payments directly to our own lightning node. We copied two things and pasted them in on ZapRite. Amazing. I was blown away with how quick that was. Um, I, again, some of you may be unfamiliar and usually there's some, some jumping through hoops, some more confusion than that, but that was, that's, that's pretty quick and pretty slick. So ZapRite. Nice job. And Tor, too. How great is that? Anyways, I digress. Okay, so now we're set up to accept on-chain Bitcoin payments and Lightning payments through our, our own node. But some of you may not have a Lightning node running, but still want to accept Lightning payments. Okay, well, how do we do that? We'll take a look at that in just a sec in the next section. 
All right, so this is going to be a, a pretty quick and easy explanation about how to connect some of these options. I'm going to focus in on Strike, Zebedee, and Albi. And so I've done videos on all of these. Um, and, and basically, with each one of these options, you're going to have some sort of a username and a, uh, a, a lightning address. And so that's really all you need to connect these. So here, I'm going to hit Connect for Strike. And I just need my strike handle, uh, which is BTC sessions. And then I hit, I agree and I hit okay. And that's it. So it, it found me. I'm done. I'm connected to strike. Amazing. <laughs> that was super easy. Okay. Jump back. So you can see now strike is connected and ready to go. Okay. What about, uh, Zebedee? I'll hit connect. Okay. What's my, my gamer tag there? Same. I agree. Hit OK. Amazing. Done. Connected. OK. <laughs> Jump back. That's green now. Albi. What about that one? Hey, uh, you, again, you can have multiple Albi um, uh, accounts. So I'll just call this uh, Albi browser because it's a browser plugin, okay? So I just need my lightning address, which is, by the way, already half-filled, at getlb.com, that's what they are. So once again, surprise, BTC sessions, okay. I agree, hit okay. Neat, connected, okay. That's it. <laughs> so, so literally just type in your username for any of those services. They're automatically connected to your page and you can receive lightning payments through any of those. I will now have the option to go directly to my LND node or Strike or Zebedee or Albi. You will specify those on whatever checkouts that you set up and you'll be good to go. Now, really quick, I just want to show also that you can connect an unchained multi-sig vault here, which is a pretty simple process. So you're just going to hit connect um, and then you're going to upload a, uh, a, the config file. I'll show you where that is momentarily. And then you're going to give it a label. Now, I'm not actually going to connect this right now, but uh, if you are on the Unchained website, I'm kind of zoomed in right now to kind of just show this section. But once you're in your vault, you just scroll down, you look for vault tools. There's something called the wallet configuration file. If you hit view, it will give you an option to download it. And you're going to upload that file right here. Then you're going to give it a label, Unchained Vault, whatever the hell you want to call it. Okay. And then um, it will say, ask you to confirm an address, much like we did with the other one. Agree. Okay. And then you're, you're all set. So payments can go directly to your Unchained Vault. And that would be, that would give you the optionality between um, if you receive an on-chain payment, it going to the, the wallet that we set up at the beginning or on-chain. So you would choose based on, again, the checkout experience that you've set up. Um, so yeah, that is that. We'll just go back to connections. I'm not going to connect that one right now. And then lastly, let's just kind of take a peek at what's available for um, the fiat payment options here. All right, so as I said, of course, um, certain ones of these are not accessible to me, but I'm just gonna kind of show you guys what's involved with ones that are here. So Stripe, if I click that, uh, it basically says, hey, I, I agree, connect to my Stripe account, connect, and it will take you to uh, Stripe, and it will allow you to basically log in uh, so on and so forth. So that's that's pretty much that. Um, let's go back to our connections um, for ACH. Uh, you basically just put in the account information that you need, name on the bank account, account type, account number, and routing number, and that's pretty much that. Uh, for SEPA payments, name, IBAN number, SWIFT, and country. And for Interac e-transfer, um, you need to put in your Interac email address, so where you can receive e-transfers. And then either you have auto deposit enabled, in which case this won't apply. But if you don't, um, there's a security question and answer, and the person will need to put in the security question, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, 
how this shows in practice is that it will tell them what they need to do. And then it will say, uh, hit the OK button once you have sent, sent the payment. And then you as the merchant go in and check that the payment has arrived and then mark the invoice as paid. So it's a bit more of a manual process, but it allows people to pay certain invoices and you to check for it. So, um, you know, a, a little less back and forth between the individual um, rather than, you know, having an email and giving them details and corresponding back and forth. It just streamlines things a little bit. So um, that's pretty much that. There will be, of course, other uh, fiat options in the future, but this is what's here for right now. And it's kind of cool to have these things alongside all of these uh, Bitcoin options. Um, and lastly, I'll just touch on, on liquid. I'll just do a, a quick little thing on that. Okay. So liquid network is something that I'm using a lot more of lately. And, uh, and the experience here in zap, right, I believe will change, um, in the coming, I don't know how long, uh, pretty quickly. I think it'll be pretty easy to implement, but right now, if I hit connect on liquid basically says you don't configure this, it will give you the option to set a liquid address, um, as you send an invoice. And so somebody can pay that. So it's a bit more of a manual process. Here's a liquid address. And then you can have it as, as an option for payment. Um, but it's, it is best to give a new address every single time. I believe pretty soon they're going to be implementing uploading an XPUB so you can receive liquid Bitcoin payments. Um, and those unfamiliar basically just cuts down on your fees with some trade-offs, um, but also some benefits in terms of privacy. So I use it uh, a fair amount now. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see any support for it. So uh, if if this gets even better with XPUBs, fantastic. And there's some other things I'd love to see out of it in the future. Nonetheless, just know that liquid is available there. And that's pretty much it. Let's uh, Let's take a look at what we're going to do next. So at this point, I have now jumped over to my actual ZapRite page that I've been using um, because I've plugged in a couple fiat options there. And I, I want to give a, a clear kind of view of what it begins to look like once you get everything, all of your tools set up and ready for use. So you can see here I have a few things extra that are activated like Stripe and, and Intrac e-transfers. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go to checkout over on the left here. And so under checkout, we see the various payment methods and the options of what is going to be my my defaults. And so right now you can see I have obviously my on chain is going to um, a wallet that I control. Um, my lightning is going to my LND node. I have Interact e-transfer as a fiat option here in Canada. And then I have Stripe as a credit card option, which should work anywhere that credit cards are accepted. And so um, all of that is there. You can basically change these as you see fit. Just keep in mind, if you've got two of the same type of payment method, you can only select one. So for instance, if I go and I click on strike as my lightning option, it'll say, hey, you're replacing your LND node with strike instead to accept lightning. So just be aware that that's the case and it will always let you know anyways. <clears throat> so I've now got my, my checkout set. And by the way, you're gonna see a few things here that, um, you know, I've already been using this. There's been some payments that have gone through. So my home is going to look a lot different than, than yours, obviously, because it's populated with, you know, all of this different stuff, you know, previous transactions and payment links and everything. So payment links are, are your pages for accepting payments for people from people for various, um, things. And so I have a few here that have already been set up, but we're going to access this. We'll just pretend that there's nothing here already. And we're going to go over to the left, uh, at the top where it says payment link. So we'll click there. And when you first navigate to this page, you will have nothing. This will be empty and there'll be an option to add a new payment link in the middle field. Um, but there will always also be the option up in the top right here. So I'm going to click add new payment link. And this is where you can start to customize and set up a payment link based on what you're trying to do with it. So in this instance here, um, I'll, I'll just create a, a, a test payment link. Okay. So we'll just call it test payment link. 
And then I can select an image. Maybe I want to upload a picture or something. So we'll just add this, this black banner that I've got here. Okay, so that uploads as an image and it'll be visible down here. Okay, so I see the image there. Um, then we give it a description, whatever it is. Maybe it's a description of the product or the service that you're offering. Test product, we'll say. And then you've got some options here. If this is meant to be a tip page, then you can set it so that it is the customer chooses what to pay. And the, basically, it'll, it'll take them there and they put in a, a dollar amount and it will prompt them to pay however they see fit. Um, otherwise, you can set a specific amount if it's a, a service or a product or something like that. Um, I'm going to... Let's, let's, uh, let's leave this and we're actually going to set a price here, okay? So I'm going to set a price of uh, $10. Now... Um, the currency I've designated us dollars, um, max quantity is one. You can have more than one, of course, if you like, and you can add an internal note if you want. I'm not going to do that right now. Down below you have options. Uh, so there's something that says require fulfillment. If I check this, it says, uh, if checked orders will be marked as paid upon payment, you will then be able to manually mark orders as complete. So that basically means that somebody will pay. It will say that they've paid, but then it will require further action from me to go and send whatever product that uh, I, I need to send to their address, okay? And at which point I would mark that complete. This is not the case for this instance. We'll just pretend it's something digital or a service or whatever. Okay. Now, enable required customer fields. So depending on what you are doing if you're shipping something obviously you're going to need like a name and an address um in some instances you may just require an email or a phone number or whatever you need to get your service or good to this person that's what you're going to check for this instance we'll just do email as an example okay and then finally you're going to choose your default checkout so we looked at our checkout field before and we had a bunch of things checked Right, we had um, my my Bitcoin wallet, my Lightning node, and Stripe and e-transfer all checked off. Um, one note on the e-transfer, and this may change over time, but um, because it's in Canada, you need to have a Canadian dollar denominated uh, checkout. Uh, in order for that to work. Otherwise, it just won't bring anything up. Um, I believe that they're going to implement a, like a conversion tool. So it'll say, you know, if you had something that the price was 100 US dollars, if you click the e-transfer thing, it'll say, please e-transfer this amount of Canadian dollars to this address. So that, that's coming. But just so you know, for right now, Canadian dollar checkout to, to make that work. So you can use the default um checkout or you can do custom and i want to show something cool in custom so custom you have your drop down right you have all of your options for payments okay and so maybe i want to accept on chain and lightning and i'm going to say no to interact e-transfer for this one um, just because it's not uh, it's in us dollars and here's the cool thing scroll down what's this add a premium to fiat payments Oh, that is so sweet. Uh, so basically, if you're a person that really prefers getting paid in Bitcoin, what people will often do is they'll charge a premium if people want to pay in dollars. Like, if, for instance, Stripe, I mean, payments get kind of locked up there for a while. There's a waiting period. They'll hold on to it for a, a little bit of it for even longer. And so, uh, you know, I, I want to discourage people from paying in credit card. But also, I recognize that if somebody's booking me, they, they may not have Bitcoin and know how to pay with it yet. So I, it's, it's still an option there. Either way, I can say, well, if somebody wants to pay with, with uh, a card, then I'm going to charge them an additional 10% or 20% or whatever it is. So I'm going to leave it at 10% right now, just as an example. Okay. So this kind of shows me a preview of what it's going to look like. And even furthermore, I can hit preview here and it'll pop up and it'll say, this is what it's going to look like at checkout. So it'll say, you can pay in, here's the total and there's a little image and then you can pay in Bitcoin, Lightning, or you can pay in card, but it's 10% more. So that's basically what the checkout's going to look like. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to hit save. Perfect. So, so there we go. And now I'm in this payment link. I can actually copy this link. I can embed this code into my website. So it's like a native, uh, uh, a natively in, in the screen so people can pay there. 
Um, or I can, uh, if I just want to view it on the web right now, I can click the top three dots and view, and it takes me to the actual payment link that people would be brought to. So let's just go through the flow here and take a look of the different uh, at the different payment options. So I'll just type in an email. That's the one thing that we required here. Uh, so tape that in and I'll hit continue. OK, and now it gives me my payment options. Let's take a look at what each one looks like. So if I hit Bitcoin, it will uh, generate a receiving address here. It says pay this amount and maybe I'll get myself off the screen here. There we go. Okay, so uh, you have a, a QR code that can be scanned that has the amount embedded in it. It has the amount below and the Bitcoin address, which can be copied by the person if they want to paste them into a wallet uh, and they're not scanning. And of course, there's an option to open a wallet on your computer and it will give you a list of options or let you pick the app that you want to use. Now, what if I change my mind? Maybe I don't want to pay $10 on chain, which would make sense. Uh, I can go back here. And let's take a look what lightning looks like. So I'm going to click lightning. All right. And so this is the really cool thing here. This actually just reached out to my lightning node over Tor running on my own start nine server and fetched a lightning invoice for me for $10. And it allows me to pay with WebLN. It allows me to open a wallet or allows me to simply scan with my phone if I want to. And actually, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm just pulling up. Uh, I've got Phoenix Wallet on my phone. If you're unfamiliar with Phoenix Wallet, got a video on it. You can go check it out. But either way, I've just got a little bit of money here. I'm going to hit the send screen, uh, which gives me the ability to scan. I'm going to scan what is on the screen right now. And so this gives me an invoice that says, hey, you're going to need to send to uh, 24,110 sats gives me just fills it all in for me. I hit the pay button here. Off it will go. And very quickly, uh, it should pop up on both my phone and on the computer saying that the invoice has been fulfilled. And so I see it on my phone now. And there we go. We can see it pop up on the screen as well. And uh, and here we see order complete. Uh, $10, 24,110 sats, the rate at the time, what was the price of Bitcoin at the time, and what method did you pay with? Furthermore, let's take a look at down below, we have the option to download a receipt. So we'll hit download and let's see what that receipt looks like here. Open it up. And again, it has all the, the branding and everything that you've set up. Order details, order ID, label, uh, total paid, the status of it, um, customer, yeah, the the email that was put in on behalf of the customer. Obviously, I just entered my own, and then the transaction itself. When did it happen? What was the payment method? What was the amount paid? What was the Bitcoin rate at the time? And it is confirmed now. So that's really cool. I love the receipt. Uh, just be aware down at the bottom, it will include the things based on your based on your decisions in and around the privacy settings that you set up initially. So the thing that said, don't show my address on on the invoices, all that kind of stuff. You get to dictate what will be down here um, in the footer. So uh, here it's showing business name, organization name, um, uh, location, just my the city and uh, country, and then an email address. So um, that looks good to me. So I'll just leave that there. And uh, back on the page, here we go. Um, so that is what a customer would see. Now, I just want to show one more time. Um, let's visit that link one last time. And let's just look what the, the credit card integration looks like, because I think, again, it's, it's cool to be able to have both in one place, as much as I'm not a fan uh, of of having credit card payments in terms of having to deal with traditional banking, um, it's still useful for those that aren't yet on a Bitcoin standard. So uh, if somebody clicks on card, it will bring up your typical uh, your typical flow. Hey, um, how do you want to pay? Card, Google Pay, put in your card number, expiration, CVC, what country and postal code. And you'll notice that it has uh, put it up by um, a dollar. So added 10% to the price because it's via card. So very awesome there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. Uh, I will show you also what the e-transfer link looks like as well. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to all of my payment links because I have one in, uh, that is enabled for e-transfers here. 
And so I'm going to pop this out. We'll hit view. And um, again, I'll just put uh, BTC sessions at gmail.com. I'll hit continue. And so for interact e-transfer, if I click that, it just brings up a little thing that says, hey, send this amount of, of Canadian dollars to this email address. And then um, it, it auto deposits there. And then it says uh, the next step, as soon as you send it, you hit notify seller and it will let me know that I should look for a payment at which point I can mark it as paid. So, you know, a couple extra steps there with e-transfers, but having that availability, um, super awesome. So either way, glad it's here. Um, now in terms of payment links, one thing I wanted to outline is the idea of actually being able to hack together a little, uh, remote point of sale terminal as well. And what you would do is, is you would set it up so that in terms of pricing, the customer chooses the amount that they want to spend. So here's one that I set up as an example. And so I'm just going to hit uh, view payment link. So we'll pop it out here. And so you could just save this as a, um, you know, you could just save this in your browser on your mobile device and just have this at a market or whatever. And then at the time, whatever is being purchased, you with the phone, just type in, you know, uh, this person bought 15 bucks worth of stuff. Uh, and then their email again, BTC sessions at Gmail. Dot com And you may not require an email. It may just be put in the amount and go. Probably pre preferable, to be honest. Um, hit continue. And then it's going to give you your Bitcoin options. And it, yeah, I'd say probably don't bother with card at that point. But you could. You could, actually, if you wanted. Um, but for myself, you know, accepting quick Bitcoin payments like that, that goes through this central, um, you know, page. That's an easy way to do it. And this is something that you could do. Uh, with with employees and stuff, they'd be able to just pull up this simple page and type in an amount and it would actually go to you as opposed to them having access to a wallet that they can then drain or do whatever. So, um, yeah, just another way to go about things and same same experience for Bitcoin on chain and lightning. Um, and then finally, let's go back to payment links one last time here. Um, because, uh, this will be, um, this is the, the tip page that I've set up again. And, um, if I just hit view, then, then pretty much the same kind of deal. Uh, you can put in an amount, um, in dollars, you can put in uh, a name or a pseudonym or whatever, and then hit continue. And then, uh, it will just give the same options. I've set that one just for, uh, Bitcoin on chain and lightning, but this is a simple way that you can go ahead and you can do easy tip pages and you can just share out the link that's in the browser and that's all you need. And you can link to that from a website or whatever. And as a matter of fact, I've actually changed my tip page on, on my main, uh, website and it now redirects to this page via ZapRite because it's all linked up to all, all my stuff. It makes it super easy. So yeah, there you go. There's there's uh, options for um, online services, for point of sale, uh, kind of, you know, hack together a little bit, but it works. And then for tip pages, uh, some nice, easy options there. Now back on the main page here, we can see uh, previous transactions that have gone through and tests and all the stuff that I've been doing. Um, so I can see all these different orders that have popped up as we've been testing here. I can also see there's a transaction um, from a few minutes ago when we did it for 24,110 sats. And so I can actually click on that and I can see the information about it. It was a lightning payment, so on and so forth. How, how did it come through? Uh, it went uh, through LND. Um, all of that, basically all the details here. And actually I've opened up my Thunder Hub on LND and I can actually see the payment coming through right here at 24,110 sats onto my own node on my start nine. So super awesome. Had I gone about it in a way where I paid on chain, then it would go directly to the wallet that I've designated in this case, the one in Sparrow um, that I have designated uh, connected to my actual ZapRite page. So all of that, all automated, all directly into my own self-custody, which is super awesome. 
Now, the other way in which you can use ZapRite is to create invoices, which I also find particularly useful because I regularly invoice people and am paid in Bitcoin. And so the way this works is there's an invoices section over here on the left. If I click that, um, again, I've done a test here, but you can search through invoices and give them numbers and pick date ranges and all this different stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a new invoice. Okay, there's a little button off to the right. Um, and so if you have some existing contacts that you've created in here, um, you'll be able to select from one. So if I click here, I can see there is a test uh, contact that I had put in. But let's pretend I'm, I'm uh, creating a new one. So I'm going to say, uh, we'll create a new contact just directly from the invoices page. And this is where you would be able to put in whatever you need. So I'm going to uh, call this Bill, I don't know, Weatherby, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so I, I fill in the basic information here, a, a name, an email. Um, you can put in a tax ID if you want. You can put in an internal note, internal note, address, any of that stuff that you need to fill in, you just put in here. Uh, and then finally, currency, what currency are you charging in? And then the payment terms, uh, how quickly is it required to be paid? So you can set a certain amount of days or just say due upon receipt, um, and then any footer note that you want. I'm going to hit save there. Okay, that now basically sets this up and says, okay, uh, here's all your information. What is the invoice title? Um, please pay. <laughs> Again, this could be like, oh, uh, you know, services rendered or, you know, um, uh, private session or what, you know, whatever, whatever the service may be. Okay, so that's all good. Items. Okay, so I'll just say, um, uh, we'll, we'll just call it again, test invoice or, or test product, whatever it is. Um, okay. What is the unit price? We'll just say five bucks as an example. How many are there? Is there a discount? Is there tax? Anything like that? Add a description, anything like that. And you can add more items as well. So I could have multiple. There's a new line item right here and we'll just add the same fields again down below. Okay, now you choose payment. Do you want the default setup so they can pay in everything or do you want custom? So you could hit custom and for this, maybe I'm saying I don't want I don't want fiat for this uh, invoice. So it's either going to be on chain or lightning or you could just have it as lightning um, by default, whatever you like. This is also where you can use liquid. And so I, I do want to show this really quick. So liquid, if I turn that on, it's going to say, uh, give me a liquid address. So if you have a liquid wallet that you typically like to use, you can do that. And so here's Blockstream Green. Open up my liquid wallet here. And so all I would do is I'd go in, I'd hit receive. I would copy an address and I would jump back and I would paste that in. So that's an option for payment as well. Um, now it says, do you want to remember this configuration for Billy? Um, I'm going to say yes, because then I don't have to do it every single time. It does say note as a privacy measure, make sure to use a newly generated receive address every time. It'll give you that option. Eventually you'll be able to do XPubs. That's all beside the point. Um, so eventually you won't have that extra step. And then you can add any sort of note. Okay, this gives me a general idea of what it's going to look like when they receive it. Uh, so that all looks good. I can hit save just to make sure that my progress isn't lost. Um, if I do that, I can see it's a draft over here on the right. But if I click back into it, I'll say, okay, this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and send it now. Also, by the way, you can, uh, you can go ahead and you can uh, lay it out differently. So there's a layout button here so you can see kind of everything all at once and it will adjust as you make your adjustments. I actually kind of prefer this layout better to work from. Um, nonetheless, that all looks good to me. I'm going to say, OK, send off it goes. And so it says, OK, uh, this is going to be sent. Does that look good? Uh, how do you want to send it? You can share a link or you can just email it. I'll email it. And um, and so it says, do you want to send a copy? Yes. Do you want to include a PDF attachment of the invoice? So for their own records, sure, why not? And then do you want to send a copy to yourself? Keep in mind, this is <laughs> this email address is the one that is uh, the actual um, the account with ZapRite. The BTC sessions at Gmail is the one I'm sending the invoice to, just to clarify. Anyways, you, you choose, you put in any sort of message that you want, 
and then send off it goes. So I should see that pop into my email momentarily. So I'm going to uh, bring it up in just a moment here and we'll take a look at what that email looks like. All right, so here I am in my email. I can see, hey, from ZapRite, there's a payment request. BTC Sessions has sent you a payment request, invoice number two for $5 due basically upon receipt. To view the invoice and payment options, click below and I can hit review and pay. And this will take me again to this uh, payment page. And so I'm gonna get myself off the screen here so you can see better, but it gives me all the information and then it says, hey, do you wanna pay the invoice? And there's a button in the bottom right. I'm gonna click that. This takes me to a very familiar page. Here we go. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, uh, hell, Let's do liquid just for fun. Um, so I've got liquid here. Uh, I've got Blockstream green on my phone. So I'm gonna just open that up. Maybe I'll get myself on the screen. Here I am. Uh, and so I'm just opening this up so that I can scan. Uh, Liquid, by the way, is very akin to um, on-chain Bitcoin, the same kind of process. You get you get an address with an amount and you can just send it at any point. There's you know, it's not like lightning. It's, it's basically the same flow as Bitcoin. So I'm just scanning with my wallet. It gives me the exact amount I need to pay and I can just slide to send and off it goes. And it should pop up here momentarily. Uh, so that'll take just... A second, there we go. Okay, and it says, hey, um, your payment is confirmed. It'll be confirmed in under one minute. Uh, and so, yeah, basically, uh, once that's done, it will show us confirmed on the screen. So we'll just wait and see what that looks like in less than a minute. All right, and there we go. We see the order complete screen, uh, $5 paid. Um, we have the amount, the, the rate at the time, at the method, and we also see the transaction ID, which we can then click and go to a block explorer if we see fit. And then just uh, getting me off the screen down below, we can see the option to download a receipt, which will be exactly like the one we've previously seen. So uh, all in all, that is your invoicing mechanism. If I, as the merchant, go back to uh, my main page, I'll go back to home, and uh, I can see under invoices, uh, the one to Billy is now paid. I can click on that and it'll show everything about it. Um, but basically, yes, this was now now paid and we're all good to go. So hooray, we've received uh, an invoice paid via Liquid, nonetheless, um, from ZapRite. Fantastic. All right, so let's chat final thoughts here in and around ZapRite. Um, number one, just the general experience as somebody that is a merchant that is offering services and wants to accept Bitcoin and send people basically to a single place. Number one, easy to set up an account. I didn't have to give up the all of my personal information and my firstborn child in order to do it. It was sign up with an email, email address, and that was pretty much it. So... It was basically instant. Um, next, connecting everything. I mean, you guys saw connecting a wallet, connecting my Lightning node, connecting any sort of Lightning service, um, throwing in a, a liquid address, connecting to Stripe or e-transfer. Basically, it's just put in the info and go. Um, there's no hoops to jump through. And, you know, most of them took less than a minute to set up, which is amazing. Um once I've done all that, again, setting up payment links or sending invoices is also super easy. The The payment links are just, you know, what's the price or can can they set them themselves? And then what type of payments do you want to receive? And do you want to add a premium to fiat? So I, I love all that. It's super easy to do. The invoices, same deal. Basically send to whoever you need to, add contacts on, on the fly if you need to during the invoice process, email it off. And, and it's done and it takes it to takes the person to an easy link where they can just pay. They can keep a PDF of the invoice if they want. It's, it's just the flow of it is super simple. So um, on top of that, it's nice and clean and polished and everything just looks nice and professional. And so, I mean, for me, this is an amazing tool. And I, I think I'm going to be using this moving forward in my day-to-day -day business uh, dealing. So yeah, I think that's incredible. So 
Having said that, you know, what things would I like to see out of this that would make it even more useful for me? And and basically, what is my wish list in and around ZapRite of what I hope to see in the future? So in terms of what I'd like to see um, with the connections there, um, Stripe honestly kind of, and this is not anything to do with ZapRite, but Stripe, in my opinion, kind of sucks because they'll, they'll hold payments for longer and they'll hold, um, you know, a chunk of it and, and release half of it. And it's just, it's a pain in the butt. I don't like Stripe. Uh, so what I would prefer as much as I cringe to say at PayPal as a Canadian accepting payments from, uh, Americans and Fiat when I have to do it, um, is preferable to that. We don't have Venmo or anything else here, but either way, like more options in, in around that stuff is awesome. And, and I'm sure that they plan to do a more integration soon. Um, in around the Bitcoin side of things, though, Liquid, uh, very much looking forward to seeing XPubs available to upload so that you can create by default a new address every time, which means that I imagine that would be able to be integrated into any sort of uh, invoice or any sort of uh, payment link or anything like that. It, sh- it should just show up there if that's the case. The other thing in and around Liquid that I would love is if you had the option um, when you're receiving an on-chain, an on-chain Bitcoin payment, if that could be received to a peg-in liquid address, meaning that somebody would send you regular Bitcoin and it would auto-convert to liquid for me as the receiver. And so that means that I can then kind of let it build on liquid until it hits a certain threshold and then I can peg out on chain for long term savings. And so that just helps me mitigate my uh, fee uh, occurrences in moving things around in the midterm until I want to move it to savings or swap out to lightning, however I see fit. Uh, And on the other side of things, some sort of mechanism to swap between on chain lightning and liquid natively would be pretty cool as well. Of course, it's self-custody, so I don't know exactly how that would work, but uh, just toss note ideas there. Um, Now, in terms of as a merchant, tools just in general for what customers could see, I would love to see kind of like a shopping cart type setup for a payment link. So you go and then there's multiple products listed and you could then say, you know, click on this, add to cart, add to cart, add a certain number to cart, all that kind of stuff, and then tally it at the end and then create an invoice based on that. This would be useful for me because I run workshops and sometimes people want to buy hardware along with the workshop admission, sometimes not. So having this all in one place would be perfect for me. And then finally, uh, I would love either a a companion app for a mobile phone or for iPad or whatever, um, or just an easily accessible page that is more or less tailored specifically for being a point of sale terminal. So like nice big keypad tallied in, maybe like a list of items that you can just tap and add to the tally, uh, you know, set up in, in various different ways. But I would love that for a uh, person to person if you're, you know, at a market or something like that, just as, a, as an individual with a, a brick and mortar store being able to say tap, 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 and then just present it. I think that would be incredible as well. So with that said, I mean, ZapRite's already incredible. I have no doubt that they're going to be working hard on adding a lot of maybe some of the stuff I've said and some stuff that maybe I didn't even anticipate needing yet, but highly encourage you to check it out. At least check out the free trial and see how you like it and um, and then provide feedback because I think these guys really value feedback from individuals that are using stuff like this. Uh, I would love to hear what you think. Please comment down below, especially if you've tried out ZapRite or if you're in the process of trying it out. Let me know about your experience and some of the things that you would like to see implemented. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, share, all those things. They help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. That little like button right before the screen, smash that. Share this on whatever socials and to whoever you think may benefit. Uh, And of course, I'm on the war path to 100,000 subscribers. I hope to do it inside of the next year. So please hit that subscribe button if you have not already. In terms of helping the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors, which are all in the show notes down below, or you can head over 
to my website, btcsessions.ca. There you can book me for actual one-on-ones, uh, which I'll, I'll be using ZapRite to do from now on, but you can book me by there for one-on-ones. If the free tutorials aren't enough and you need some extra hand-holding, this is where you can do it, btcsessions.ca. And fun fact on the same topic as ZapRite, uh, if you go to the top and you see the little tips section on my website, that will also direct you to my ZapRite tip page as well. If you want to experiment and play with that, feel free to, uh, but of course you're not obligated. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Hold all the Bitcoin.